This is a tutorial on isolating variables. Say we were given the expression 4x plus 7 is equal to 11, and we were asked to solve for x. Well, we could do that. First, we would subtract 7 from both sides, and we would get 4x is equal to 4. And then we would divide both sides by 4 to get x alone. We'd find out that x is equal to 1. Well, say we were given an expression without any numbers, just with variables, and it was ax plus b is equal to c. Well, notice this second expression is just like the first expression that we solved for, except all of our numbers are just variables. Now, if we were asked to solve for x, or in this case, since these are all variables, we call it isolating x, we could do that and we would follow all the same steps we followed before. So the first step we did was we subtracted 7. Well, 7 in this case is our b, so we would subtract b from both sides. We would end up with ax is equal to c minus b. And now we're still trying to get x alone on one side of the equal sign. And our second step when we solved our first equation was divide by 4. So in this case, we're going to divide by a on both sides. So what we would end up with is x is equal to c minus b over a. So here we've successfully isolated x. And then to isolate this variable, we have followed all the same rules that we would when we were trying to solve for that variable. It's just we can't solve for it because all of our numbers are actually variables. So let's try this one more time. Here we're given 7x plus 3 divided by 4 is equal to 6. Well, to solve for x, we would multiply both sides by 4. We would get 7x plus 3 is equal to 24. Then we would subtract 3 from both sides. So we get 7x is equal to 21. And then we would divide by 7 on both sides and we would find out that x is equal to 3. Well, here we're given an equation that's just like the first equation. And we want to isolate x. Well, again, our first step was to multiply both sides by 4, or whatever was in our denominator. So we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to multiply both sides by w. So we would end up with zx plus y is equal to n times w. Then we would subtract y from both sides, and we would get zx is equal to n times w minus a y. And then lastly, we would divide both sides by z. And we would get x is equal to nw minus y all over z. So again, we've isolated x. And to isolate x, we use all the same rules and procedures that we did to solve x in the other equation. Well, let's see how we can apply this. Here we're told George is a top fuel drag racer. His car can accelerate from a standstill at 140 miles per hour per second. If George's speed is given by the equation v is equal to at, where v is his speed, a is his acceleration, and t is the amount of time he accelerates for, rearrange the equation to isolate t and then determine how long it takes him to accelerate to 100 miles per hour. Well, the first step is to isolate t. So let's look at our equation. We have b is equal to a t. And then to isolate t, we would just divide both sides by a. And we would get t is equal to v over a. Now we're asked to find out how long it takes him to accelerate to 100 miles per hour. Well, 100 miles per hour is the speed that he's going to be going. So that's going to be our v. And we know that his car can accelerate at 140 miles per hour per second. So that's going to be our a. And we're just going to substitute these numbers in for v and a. So we're going to get t is equal to 100 over 140. And if we solve that, we're going to find out that George's top fuel drag racer can accelerate to 100 miles per hour 
0.71 seconds. Let's try this again. Here we're told Tom is building a round table that needs to have at least 28.25 square feet of flat area. Rearrange the equation for the area of a circle and then solve for the diameter of the table. And then the area of a circle is just pi r squared. So first we're asked to rearrange the equation and then solve for the diameter. Well, this equation doesn't have the diameter in it. It has the radius. So you have to realize that the diameter is just two times the radius. So what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange this equation for the radius. So to do that, we have area is equal to pi r squared. And the first thing we're going to do is divide by pi. So we'll get r squared is equal to area divided by pi. And then since this is a square, we square root both sides. And we get r is equal to the square root of the area over pi. Well now that we've isolated this equation for the radius, we're just going to plug in our area in for a and solve for our radius. So r is equal to the square root of 28.25 divided by pi. And pi is equal to 3.14. So if you plug that in for pi, we're going to get our radius is the square root of 28.25 over 3.14. We're going to find out our radius is about 3 feet. Well, if our radius is 3 feet and we're asked for our diameter, we can just plug that 3 in for our radius here. And we're going to find out the diameter of the table is 6 feet. And that concludes the tutorial on isolating variables.